I'm Atuba George and I'm so excited to be bringing God's truth to you today. Are you ready? Now we are talking about living carefree. And I said number one is to humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. So even in doing this that the Lord has commanded us concerning our daily bread, you humble yourself under his mighty hand. You may have surplus food today, but when the Lord says, ask me for your daily bread, you better obey him. Humble yourself and ask. So are you ready? Say this, we say, Father, I receive today my daily bread. It's coming to me now in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Father, we honor you. Thank you for, for this beautiful time of fellowship. And, and Holy Spirit, you are not holding back anything from us that will be profitable. We open our hearts to receive freely from you, Lord. And I declare burdens are lifted right now and yokes are destroyed to everyone, in everyone listening to me right now. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Praise God. Now, we've been talking about living carefree. Have you begun to understand this? Praise God. First, Timoth First, First Peter, sorry, First Peter chapter 5. He says, Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time. And he told you how to do it. Cast your cares, all your concerns, all your worries, all your anxieties, cast it on to the Lord. How am I going to pay that bill in the month? And it's a care. But what if this doesn't happen and this? And so what will I now do in case this happens and anxiety? Can you imagine? I've been telling my boss to increase my salary and, and he's telling me he will. But, but for the past three months now, I've not seen any change. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Worries. What's he saying you should do? Cast. Take every one of it. Take it. And so to Lord. Lord. I drop these things before you. You know these things? I'm not going to worry, care over them again. Why? Lord, you take full responsibility over these cares. And this is my responsibility. I'm going to do whatever you tell me to do. See? Now, remember, he says, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. So, he, he is telling you, find my mighty hand and bring yourself under. In the area of finances, for example, he is giving us good financial principles. And when you want to think finances, you think his word. And you bring yourself under it. So yesterday I was talking to you about tithes. With every reason you may have not to tithe, you bring yourself under his instruction because that is a clear instruction he has given. It's a command. Tithing is a command. You don't do it. You are a thief. You are robbing God. Now, if you've not listened to any series I've done on tithing, go, go get it. It will, it will really, 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 really bless you. Before you start arguing, how are we supposed to tie? Uh, hey, hey, if you don't tie it, hear me? Doesn't matter what you think. If you don't tie it, you are a thief. You're not only stealing from God, you are stealing people's destinies. Because the tithe in your hand was supposed to promote someone's destiny. The tithe in your hand is supposed to be the answer to someone's cry. And you hold on to it, someone cries, gives up, and you're, you're the cause. 
Yeah, how can I be the cause of You are, because you are a thief. Why do you cry when people steal from you? It's not just because they stole money from you. It is more painful because you had that money earmarked for something. See, now they took it away and you, you were just like, oh, this is wickedness. It's not just the money. You are seeing where that need would have gone to. And now these people have taken it away. So it's the same thing when you don't tithe. God is looking at that need that, that he had programmed that tithe. So it's his money. You think he didn't have plans for it? He's seen it. And he said, no, Lord, I won't tithe. My needs are too much. Oh, I don't believe in tithing. Hey, you're a pure thief. Like I said, get, get the teachings I've done on Titan. Listen to it before you argue. Don't send me any message. Uh, uh, no, go listen to the messages. When you're done, they say, okay, I'll listen to the message. And there's this thing you said that I have a problem with. Fine. But some people, once they hear Titan, their ears just get blocked because of wrong teachings that they have received previously concerning Titan. And I told you, everybody that tells you not to tithe is simply walking by the spirit of the Antichrist. My apologies to them, but it's just the truth. They need to repent. And I apologize to you. Praise God. So, so I talked to you about tithing yesterday. God have commanded us to tithe. So when it comes to your finances, you accept it. doesn't matter the pressure you're under. You accepting to do God's will first is humility. And how do you do that? Every care that comes to that, you cast it over onto the Lord. Now, the same thing with your health. The same thing with your health. Some, you know, some of us are just too quick to run to the hospital. Every small thing. Oh, ah, let me go see the doctor. You call, doctor, please, my head is doing like this. When are you going to step into your inheritance and believe God's word? I'm not saying it's wrong to go to the hospital, but I'm telling you as a child of God, you are much more than one who's always needing care. So you begin to exercise faith in that area. You remember King Asa, he died because he got sick. And the Bible says, instead of him to go before the Lord and know, Lord, I, I'm not supposed to be sick. So what is this about? And then the Lord would have told him, Asa, you erred in this area. Repent and go back to the right thing and I'll heal you. And he would have repented and God would have healed him. But you see, he didn't do that. Rather, he went to the doctors and said, Doctor, look, find a way to remove the sickness from me. And God said, oh, oh, look at this guy. He's, he's, he's not only sin, he's, he's now looking for another God. Because if God have told you, he will deal with you. Instead of repenting before the Lord, you're going to look for someone else to cover you from the hand of God. Is that possible? But people do that. So sometimes when you feel that symptoms of sickness, it's important you pause and like, no Lord, what's going on? Now, sometimes the Lord, will, the Lord will tell you, go and see the doctor. And when he tells you, go and see the doctor, you know, you know you will get solution quick. And all that times, God will tell you, take care of this, take care of this issue. And you take care of that issue and your health is restored instantly. I'll never forget this many years ago. I had this excruciating pains around my tummy. So bad I could even walk properly. And, and I got, I didn't run to the doctor. I went before the Lord. I said, Lord, this is not supposed to be. What's going on? I said, Lord, you know, you know, there are times you call, I confess my healing. I receive my healing. There are other times you say, Lord, what's going on? I need your wisdom in this area. I'm not supposed to be sick. I know about divine health. I know about divine healing. So what's, what's the meaning of this? And while I was praying, the Lord spoke to me and said, so so person is coming to your room he's coming to see you when he comes that shit that is there give it to him i said 
Okay. Now, here was I praying to God concerning the pain that I was, I was going through. And the Lord just giving me instruction. He didn't tell me about the pain. He just said, when your friend comes, tell me the name of the person. And a moment later, truly, the person the Lord told me about showed up. And of course, when I saw him, I knew why he was here. <laughs> Praise God. He didn't know. He just came to see me. I said, oh, is everything? And then we got talking and we finished. I got up, took out the shirt, arranged it, and I gave it to him. I said, well, I said the Lord commanded me to give it to him. It's yours now. Whoa, thank you, you know. And then he left. The moment he left, the pain left. Now, how do you connect those two? I don't know. Praise God. But you see, the Lord said, when he comes, give him that. It was left for me to do what? Walk in pride. He said, Lord, when he comes, I'm telling you, I'm having pain. You're saying a friend is coming to see you. I'm going to the hospital. Ah, Lord, I can't continue. I can't continue with this pain. But the Lord said, now, nah, you, know, you know, sometimes we don't know how the Lord communicates. I'm here praying concerning a pain. The Lord didn't talk to me about the pain. Rather, he's giving me a separate instruction. It's left for me to say, okay, Lord, it is the man that is alive that can give a shit. <laughs> right now, since you're not talking to me about this, let me go see the doctor. I, I'll go see the doctor and the friend will come and not meet me. I've walked in disobedience. The doctor will get, you know, once the grace of God is not available, they will begin to tell you things and tell you some long stories. But right there, I will beat the Lord. See, that was that home. You bring yourself under the mighty hand of God. What if this thing gets worse is a concern. Cast it over to the Lord. He said, my friend is coming. I'll wait here for him to come. What if I die waiting? He said, I should wait. I cast. If, if, if There's no way I'm going to even die. Because he said, my friend is coming. When he comes, I should be, at least I'm going to obey him. The one who says I should give, and I'm waiting here to give him, will not let me die until I do that thing. And then I obeyed the Lord. Instantly. Instantly. And I mean this. Instantly the pain left. And I was healed. Whatever he tells you to do. That's what Mary told those servants. Do it. Sometimes you're praying, oh God, my finances, Lord. Things are hard. Things are getting bad. You know, things are... And then the Lord said, Call so so and so person you have been having grudges, grudges, grudges against and apologize. Lord, see. See, Lord, I need money right now. You're telling me to go and apologize to somebody. We'll do that later. But Lord, this. Call the person and apologize to the person. How does that affect my money? Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. Now cast every care that will stop you from being humble. See? Humbling yourself under God's word. You cast all those care. Cast them over to the Lord. Because he cares for you. So the Lord says, go and apologize to that person. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Should I call or you want me to go there? I want you to go see him face to face. Thank you, Lord. Then you take that money. Hey, See this money? You have used it to buy food now. You're going to use to pay transport to see somebody that may not even accept your apology. I cast the care of food over to the Lord. The Lord has given me a work to do. I will obey him. And then you get there, obey the Lord. And oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. You apologize as the Lord has commanded you. And then you turn to go. A miracle happens. And then another one. And then another one. Then your life becomes a strain of miracles. Why? Because you chose to live carefree. Praise God. Yeah. You see, cares are designed to stop you from doing the will of God. That's it. Every time you meet people not doing the will of God, what is your problem? They begin to list their cares for you. Cast it all to the Lord. 
and receive his grace upon your life because he gives grace to the humble. Praise God. Our time is up today. I hope this has been a blessing to you so far. You know, I'd like to hear from you, right? Now, if you haven't liked uh, or subscribed to our YouTube channel, please do so today. Don't let, if I right now, just, just go on YouTube, look for Atuba Judge, subscribe, and then put on your notification button. Praise God. I'll see you tomorrow. God bless you. Bye.